Hello, my name is Yolanda Reyes, and this summer, as a Resnick Sustainability Institute Way Fellow at Caltech, I was mentored by graduate students Levi Palmer, Wan Siok Lee, and Principal Investigator Professor Scott Cushing as we characterize the oxidation states of transition metal polymers using electron energy loss spectroscopy. We are presenting to you from Pasadena at Caltech in Southern California. This summer, I participated in research located on the illegally occupied ancestral lands of the Keys, Shumash, Ashiman, and tribes collectively referred to as the Tongva. We recognize their distinctive spiritual relationship with this land and acknowledge it as their ancestral home. I am humbled to present to you from their sacred land. Today I will present to you the motivation and challenges with characterizing transition metal polymers using electron energy loss spectroscopy or EELS. I will also discuss the methods and challenges when preparing an electron transparent sample as well as expand upon how we implemented a femtosecond laser to produce electron pulses. I will conclude today with presenting data on the iron 3 acrylate sample we characterized this summer. Transition metal dual ionically cross-linked double networks, as illustrated here, display unique properties similar to cartilage or rubber. Developing reliable and cost-effective methods for replacing human-grade cartilage using additive manufacturing can only be realized once we have properly characterized transition metal polymers. Z's research produced newly printed hydrogels in images A and C, which appear transparent and colorless, completely devoid of metal crosslinkers. After an equilibrium process, the hydrogels in images B and D appear opaque and yellow, indicative of the presence of iron cross-link double networks. Designing reliable materials capable of replacing cartilage will have huge impacts in the healthcare industry and improve the quality of life for many. But we need to know more about the coordination number and oxidation states of these materials so we can maximize their potential as replacement cartilage. Oxidation states indicate the degree of oxidation of an atom and is known formally as the hypothetical charge of an atom if all bonds were 100% ionic. Transition metal oxide materials can have any number of oxidation states which lead to certain chemical and physical properties such as magnetoresistive effects and are of great interest for catalytic and electrochemical applications. Oxidation states are linked to the uniquely detailed shape of the L2-L3 edge. Using the white line ratio, the integral intensity ratio of the L3 and L2 edges, peaks can be correlated to their formal oxidation state. Using eels to characterize the oxidation state and coordination number of transition metal polymers has gained interest due to the discovery of some 2D materials having conducting and or superconducting electron gas at the interface between two insulating materials. However, non-conductive samples like polymers have a high beam sensitivity and quickly degrade under the electron beam. By implementing a femtosecond laser to trigger photo emission, we reduce damage and can effectively use eels to characterize samples which have up until now been left out of research. Learning more about transition metal polymers, their dual ionically cross-linked networks, and their unique properties will revolutionize the development of human-grade shock absorbers, improving the quality of life for many. Our research implements a novel analytical approach for eels polymer characterization using a femtosecond laser to trigger pulses in order to maintain sample quality and gain reliable data. Here in yellow, we have the electrons coming from our electron gun, hitting an electron transparent sample and producing a wide range of electron matter interactions. When collecting eels, we are only concerned with electrons that have an inelastic interaction or an overall loss of translational kinetic energy. Using eels to characterize the oxidation state of our iron metal acrylate has other challenges such as minimizing the delocalization of inelastically scattered electrons. Here I have 
a reducing agent labeled A in blue with two electrons. This compound interacts with an oxidizing agent labeled B in orange. When oxidation occurs, compound A, A's electrons are lost to compound B. B undergoes reduction simultaneously by interacting with compound A's electrons. Now the oxidation state of the compounds has changed and we can call compound A oxidized and compound B reduced. Knowing the coordination number and oxidation states of a material using eels will shed light on properties related to decomposition, reactivity, bonding, and conductivity. These properties can dictate the reliability and longevity of any replacement cartilage and must be investigated further. An electron's change in energy is directly related to a specific atom with a specific orbital shell in which the inelastic collision took place. This loss of energy is known as eels. Here we have an iron 3 oxide thin film spectrum from the online database Eels Atlas showing the characteristic zero loss peak, which is, is composed of elastically scattered electrons and is the most intense peak. The plasmon peaks which are a collective oscillation of free electrons that occur in metals and metal-like materials comes next. After the plasmon peaks, we incur the ionization edges, which contain information about the energy band structure of a sample. Using eels to explore transition metals such as iron, which can be 3D printed to form a placement cartilage in humans, is the future of medicine currently being invented. Over the summer, we used two methods of sample preparation in order to characterize the Greer Lab's iron metal acrylate sample. The first method is drop casting, where we deposit nanoparticles and powders onto copper grids. In this method, we prepare a sample by mixing a solution of metal acrylate and ethanol in a scintillation vial. After sonicating for 10 minutes, the solution is pipetted onto a copper TEM grid and is allowed to evaporate under a hood. Using a vacuum pickup to handle our grids, we load them into the sample holder, and now we are ready for insertion into the TEM. The second method for preparing an electron transparent sample is to use FIB milling. This machine can utilize a combination of electrons and ions in order to etch material from a bulk sample. Pictured on the right, are different concentrations of the Greer Lab's iron and chromium metal polymers mounted on two milling stages. Normally, the FIB lift-out process utilizes the deposition of platinum to protect a sample. However, when attempting to deposit a rectangle of platinum, which is lighter in color in image one, the sample degraded significantly. This led us to forego the depositing of platinum onto our sample in order to maintain sample quality. The next steps in making a TEM lamella require several rectangles to be etched. This leaves a rectangle in a well. In order to perform a lift out, we have to begin a U-cut. In image one, we can see that it is still attached on the bottom and sides, whereas in image two, we have our guide deplaced which indicates where the electrons and ions will be hitting our sample etching away in that area. Once we have completed the U-cuts on both sides such as in image 3 the lamella is ready for welding to the omniprobe needle. We move our omniprobe needle in place as seen in image 4 and in image 5 the needle is touching the edge of our lamella. In order to adhere our lamella to our omniprobe needle, we need to weld it. And in image six, you can see the area highlighted by green that will be irradiated in order to weld to our lamella. And after many hours of training, reading, attending virtual lectures, and milling samples, we have a TEM-ready electron transparent lamella. Instrument building is very tedious, but very rewarding. Helping graduate students and my principal investigator build their EEL setup was a dream come true, and I am excited to share it with you. Leo Senchan Nyavo, Malaya. May Creator help you all 
How are you all today? When the summer started, I made my way to Caltech, where I was determined to learn all I could from my mentors who build scientific equipment to collect data in wavelengths I could never achieve in my dining hall. I constructed optics table components in order to help the group achieve femtosecond laser photo emission triggers in this transmission electron microscope. I used these mirrors, assembled these posts, which were then placed on the three-tiered optics table here. Laser pulses in alignment for creating electron pulses will enter the TEM under the orange X, whereas future work will implement laser pulses for time-resolved measurements under the red X. In addition to contributing to the optics table build, I replaced and reassembled mirrors for electron pulses and time-resolved measurements. Instrumentation building has many components and many different tasks. In order to build an instrument and then use it reliably to characterize a sample in just 10 short weeks, we had to navigate legacy hardware and software. When our computer crashed, I virtualized the old environment and exported this virtual appliance so that future group members have an easy plug-and-play version of the Windows 2000 environment. Over the course of the past 10 weeks, we have worked to implement a novel analytical approach for polymer characterization using a femtosecond laser to trigger photo emission. Our dedication paid off, and now I present to you our results for a sample provided by the Greer Lab of Iron 3 Acrylate. Figure A displays the yield spectrum of Iron 3 Acrylate monomer showing the core loss iron L2, L3 edges. The L2, L3 core loss peaks found at 721 electron volts and 708 electron volts allow us to analyze metal oxidation states within the polymer ex situ. Figure B shows the plot of eel spectrum data for our iron 3 acrylate monomer, clearly displaying a plasmon peak found at 25 electron volts and the core loss iron M2, M3 edges at 54 electron volts. We are currently researching the fundamentals behind core, hole, and high-energy excitations to determine why the M2, M3 edge is blue-shifted from the reported 54 electron volts for iron-3. In figure C, we see a close-up of the features of the M2, M3 edge currently reported to be found at 54 electron volts. One of the main differences between R plot in blue and the atlas plot in orange is that we can very clearly see the double bumps in our plot indicative of oxidation in our iron sample. And this final image was taken with our TEM in imaging mode. It shows a topographic view of our drop casted monomer iron sample. We appreciate you spending your time with us as we present our 2021 Summer Wave Fellows Internship Research Characterizing Oxidation States of Transition Metal Polymers. I am forever grateful for the opportunity to walk the paths I did while at Caltech this past summer. I wouldn't be here without the support and guidance of my many mentors, some pictured here. Thank you for your support and guidance. Thank you to the Resnick Institute for supporting the Wave Fellows Program, to Caltech for seeing the need for a Wave Fellows Program, and for expanding this summer research opportunity to underrepresented minorities. Thank you to the Cavalier Nanoscience Institute, who made my experience with fib milling very productive by providing excellent learning resources. This concludes my presentation on characterizing oxidation states of transition metal polymers using electron energy loss spectroscopy. Thank you for your time. I will now answer any questions you have.